Italy officially surrendered on September 8, 1943. But what happened to the Italian soldiers that were stationed outside Italy when the Italian armistice was announced? What happened to the soldiers that were stationed in France, Yugoslavia, Albania and Greece? What orders did they receive? Which actions did they undertake? That is what you will learn in this video about the fate of Italy's soldiers after the Italian armistice of 1943. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel and if you are new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history in videos like this. If you find it interesting as well, consider subscribing. Also hit that notification bell. Mid-May 1943, the Axis lost the North Africa campaign and two months later, the Allies landed on Sicily and Rome was bombed. Because of this, morale of the Italian civilian population had reached an all-time low. On the night of the 24th of July 1943, Italian Minister of Justice Dino Grandi requested a meeting of the Great Council. A vote of no confidence was proposed where Mussolini was demanded to hand back his powers to the king. Grandi's motion attracted a substantial majority of the vote and Mussolini was arrested. The next day, the king appointed a new cabinet with Italian Marshal Pietro Badoglio as prime minister. The new government abolished most of the institutions of the fascist regime. Fascism had crumbled from within, eaten away by corruption, cynicism, disillusionment and despair. This did not mean the end of the war for Italy. Heck, it didn't even mean the end of the Italo-German Pact of Steel, as Badoglio reassured the Germans that Italy would fight on the side of Germany. However, in secret, Badoglio negotiated with the Allies, and on the 3rd of September they came to an agreement. This armistice was announced on September 8th. Right after that, the Italian king, government and supreme command left Rome and made it to the Allied lines further south. But therefore the Italian soldiers abroad were left to their own devices. The Germans had seen this coming and they executed a contingency plan long prepared known as Operation Achse or Operation Axis. In this video we're going to discuss what happened to the Italian soldiers stationed abroad when the Italian armistice on September 8th was announced. Just to be clear, we're talking about men under arms. The North Africa campaign was over and sure, there may have been Italian POWs still holding up in North Africa. The same goes for the USSR where tens of thousands of Italians were taken prisoner by the Red Army. Italian participation on the Eastern Front ended early 1943 once the Italian 8th Army got routed by the advancing Soviets. The remaining troops were pulled off the front by Mussolini. When Italy surrendered in September 1943, Italian soldiers abroad under arms were stationed in Greece Albania, Yugoslavia and France. By that time, unified Italian command had ceased to exist. So what we see happening to these soldiers stationed abroad is a variety of things we're going to discuss in this episode. Let's start with Greece. Greece was occupied by Germany, Italy and Bulgaria after the April 1941 campaign was over. In October 1940, Mussolini had invaded Greece from Italian-occupied Albania. This campaign became a disaster as the Greek army drove the Italians back into Albania. The Germans came to Italy's aid and conquered Greece quickly. Greece was then partitioned and the Italians occupied the bulk of mainland Greece with 93,000 troops and the most of the islands with 70,000 troops. During the occupation they did try to alleviate the Greek famine which wasn't successful and carried out reprisals such as the Dominican massacre. Italian discipline proved bad as time progressed. Italian soldiers often got drunk and by 1943 some of them were chanting down with Mussolini, down with Hitler and down with the war. Relations with their fellow Axis soldiers weren't good either. Often there were bar brawls between German and Italian soldiers and sometimes even a shootout. 
the Italians were not very willing to take on the Greek resistance. And as the fetus moved in Rome increased, so it did in the Italian occupied territories. On the 20th of May, Hitler ordered plans to be drawn up for a German takeover in the Balkans if Italy wanted to sue for peace. When Mussolini was toppled in a palace coup in Rome, the Germans rushed into action and German tanks rolled to the Italian HQ in Athens and General Le secretly ordered all German units in the Balkans to be ready to disarm the Italian forces there in an event of an Italian withdrawal from the war. Only a handful of Italian fascist supporters were dismayed by Mussolini's downfall. The others waited in suspense about what the Badoglio government would bring. On one island, the Italian soldiers were willing to surrender at the first sight and had their white flags ready. On another island, all fascist symbols disappeared in hours after the coup was announced. And when Italy's surrender was announced via the radio on the 8th of September, the Italian soldiers started to celebrate this with the Greek population only when there were no Germans around. Athens on the morning of the 10th of September was like an endless market festival as the Italians stripped their units of equipment and sold it on the streets. Weapons, motorbikes, bicycles, blankets and boots, furniture from offices and masses, typewriters, even the occasional car. Italian General Vecchiarelli made it clear to Army Group E Commander Le that his troops would not fight against the Germans. Le made it clear that if the Italians refused either to fight as part of Army Group E or to surrender unconditionally to the Germans, Operation Axis should come into effect. Under German supervision, the Italians were disarmed. First, their heavy weaponry and later their light weaponry. The Italian soldiers were then given a choice, either fight at the side of the Germans or being evacuated from Greece. Now most opted for the latter choice. However, they hoped they'd be repatriated to Italy, but instead of that, they were put on trains and deported to prison camps north. Now on several occasions, Italians did resist the efforts of Germans to disarm them. On roads, there was a two-day battle before 7,000 Germans retook control and took 40,000 Italians as prisoner. The Dodecanese Islands were under Italian control since 1912 and it took the Germans over two months to capture them all. On the Ionian Islands, Italians were even joined by the Greeks to take on the Germans. Zante was pacified soon, but on Cephalonia, German air and sea assaults had to put down the resistance, which happened on the September 24th. As punishment, the Germans executed 155 Italian officers and 4,750 men. Corfu was taken a few days later and also reprisals occurred there. Another 500 Italians drowned when their ship that was ferrying the, them to the mainland capsized. On Crete, one Italian major set up a fascist body to quote salvage Italy's honor. I read that in 1944 around 10,000 Italian black shirts fought at the side of Germany but were treated with such huge disrespect that many deserted. Italians that remained in Greece under arms to serve for the Germans hoped that the Allies would arrive rather sooner than later. Some of them ran over to the side of the Greek resistance, as already thousands had done this. So what about Albania? Albania was conquered by Italy actually before the Second World War broke out, in April 1939. Despite some local Albanian resistance here and there, for example, as the coastal city of Dures, the Italian troops seized control over the country quickly and King Zog fled to Greece. The Italian transformed Albania into a miniature version of the Italian fascist state. It was from Albania that Italy launched its disastrous invasion of Greece that was only won after the German intervention April 1941. The Italian protectorate of Albania was awarded with parts of today's Montenegro, Serbia and North Macedonia and the biggest part of today's Kosovo became part of this version of Greater Albania. 
From September 1942, the communist-oriented National Liberation Movement, led by future dictator Enver Hoxha, was founded. Albanian nationalists who were anti-communist formed the Bali Kumbeta, who later collaborated with the occupiers. As organized resistance grew, and Italy was suffering defeats, bringing the war closer to home, as well as the fact that the Italians could not even establish rudimentary security in Albania, it caused the morale of the soldiers stationed there to sink. And as Italy surrendered, the Germans took over Italy's positions in Albania as well. Three German divisions under General Hubert Lanz overran Albania, encountering only minimal resistance. There was some clash to the south of Dures, and I read that in Tirana, one German lieutenant was shot. Italian units were completely without instructions. Badoglio gave no clear orders and did not declare war on Germany until the middle of October. Italian units were on their own. Even worse, they were at the mercy of their officers. The Allies hoped that the Italians would team up with the Albanian partisans, but most Italian soldiers wanted to go home. Yet the Albanian partisans did manage to capture much of the equipment the Italians left behind. Thousands of Italians were evacuated by the Allies. The Germans captured some 90,000 Italians in Albania, 45,000 avoided capture and disappeared into the country. Thousands of them did join the Albanian resistance who had a pretty forgiven attitude towards them, except for those who are members of the secret police, many of whom were executed by the partisans. Many others wandered through the country in search of food or work, and many would perish during the following winter, 1943-44. A British report stated that during that winter, 100 Italians perished per day. When the Second World War in Europe was over, around 20,000 disarmed Italian soldiers were still holding out in Albania. Let's look at Yugoslavia. The Kingdom of Yugoslavia was invaded by the Axis powers in April 1941, at the same moment as Greece was invaded. After 12 days, the South Slav state collapsed and was then partitioned by the Axis powers. The partition of the Yugoslav Kingdom is pretty complicated because not only it was partitioned by different nations, also the type of occupation differed. So there are basically three types of Italian territory. First, the direct annexations, such as southern Slovenia, the Ljubljana province, part of Dalmatia and southern Montenegro, Kotor. Second, the territories under Italian administration, the majority of Montenegro. And third, under Italian influence, the southern part of the independent state of Croatia. And then there were also the territories that were allocated to Italian-controlled Albania, as I discussed earlier. Italian rule varied in the types of occupation, but also varied through time. The Italian soldiers stationed in Yugoslavia heard about the Italian armistice via a radio broadcast and had practically received no orders on what to do since centralized Italian command had ceased to exist. The armistice was received by Italian troops like the sound of the factory siren at the end of a day's shift. It was time to go home. This factory siren was also heard by the Yugoslav resistance, the partisans and the Chetniks, who the latter by this time had also collaborated with the Axis and fought against the partisans. This story is very complicated. I won't go into the details here, but I will do so in the future. The Germans started to drop leaflets, urging the Italians to surrender their arms to them. Now, most Italian soldiers surrendered to the Germans and were taken to prisoner of war camps in Germany. Some resisted, for example near the area of Dubrovnik, and others made it home by boat. The Italians had come to hate the Germans and many preferred handing over their weapons to the resistance. That in many cases did happen. The partisans moved with intent once the armistice was announced and managed to disarm four Italian divisions and parts of nine others. From the great military depots on the coast, they got much more. Eventually, the bulk of Italian weaponry ended in the hands of partisan leader Josep Broz Tito. Italian officers of these units were later 
court martialed as the Germans did deem them as traitors. On this occasion, three generals and 47 officers were executed and soon thereafter, two more Italian generals and 29 officers were sentenced to death and shot. Some Italians did join Tito's forces, but Doglio wrote later in his memoirs that he instructed Italian forces through Allied intelligence to join the partisans in the Balkans and form guerrilla units in Italy. But from what I understood is that these orders barely reach any Italian soldiers stationed outside Italy once Italy surrendered. Much lesser known is the Italian occupation of a part of France. Italy's participation in the Second World War actually started on the 10th of June 1940 when Mussolini declared war on France. At that moment, the German invasion of France was already well on its way. The Italians had great difficulty advancing across the Alps, but due to the rapid German success, Italy became a victor. Italy was allowed to annex some parts of France. The Italian zone of occupation was extended in November 1942 when the Germans annulled the autonomy of the Vichy France regime. During the winter, living standards plummeted. When news of Mussolini's downfall reached the Italian troops in France, it was greeted with celebration, both by officers and men. Some soldiers even started to chant communist songs. Now, in the following months, the Italian command started a process of gradual withdrawal from France. Frictions with the Germans present started to occur, especially since the Germans had their plan to take over Italy once Italy would sue for peace. On the 3rd of September, when the Italo Allied armistice was signed in secret but not yet announced, the 4th Army in France received a directive called Memoria 44, a plan of what to do in case of a German attack. Now, do notice that this directive did not mention any possible Italo Allied armistice. So, when on September 8th, the armistice was announced, the Italian soldiers in France were caught by surprise. Believe it or not, without any orders from Rome, panic set in among the soldiers scattered across the Mediterranean coastline as the Germans set in motion Operation Axis. Some Italian soldiers fled into the mountains and were hit by French civilians who were quite sympathetic to Italian police. A report made clear how many French people were moved by the Italian soldiers' condition and in a surprising shift of opinion, the very persons who had railed against them before suddenly expressed sympathy for them. Most Italians surrendered en masse, but there were some exceptions. In the town of Albertville, a confrontation took place at the Italian barracks with the Germans. The Italians surrendered shortly after. In Grenoble, a much bigger confrontation took place that allegedly resulted in hundreds of casualties on both sides. In the Nice railway station, a small Italian garrison fought hand-to-hand -hand against the Germans. Remnants of the Italian 4th Army made it across the border, only to be cut off by the advancing Germans. There, the 4th Army was officially disbanded. In total, 62,000 soldiers of the 4th Army, 37,000 of whom were formerly stationed in France, ended up in German prison camps. All in all, most Italian soldiers ended up in German captivity after the 1943 Italian surrender. This was pretty brutal, since the Germans did not deem them as POWs, but rather as traitors, and it is something I hope to cover in the future. Now, if you have ever spoken to or perhaps are related to someone who served in Italian uniform in World War II, I'm really curious how they experienced the Italian armistice. So please leave a comment. I'm really curious in reading that. Thanks to my patrons. You see their names on the screen right now. And a special thanks to Thomas Zabiega, Damien Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Marcus Kaas, Nick Terranova, Haley, Mark Little Hale, Janus Jorgenkiewicz, Joan Jester Tabel, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Fabrizio, Way Back History, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, Luis Pichera, and Mike West. If you'd like to learn how Mussolini fell from power, you can click right here. If if you like to learn about the Italian army 
of the Second World War till 1943. You can click right here. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you have not already. And over to